the kids who feel free to fail, the kids who feel free to embrace failure, that actually go out and do great stuff because they're the ones who want to problem solve. They're the ones who are not scared to try. So if you want the real story, uh, the true one, is I had an Australian boyfriend that my parents didn't want me to marry. <laughs> so they tricked me into having a one-year sabbatical from college and getting in touch with my Indian roots. So I was here for a year. Um, I was teaching in a very prestigious school in Jakku. Um, and that's when I first, uh, my heartstrings got tugged to come back, to go finish my education and come back because um, what was being done with children in schools was very, very sad. It was a total um, robbery of the childhood. Was it, uh, you know, it was almost like kids being in jail. The only difference is that they were getting an academic outcome. I've lived my life largely by following universal signs. It's something um, I felt from when I was a child that I have a very strong destiny, that I'm protected, and the universe will give me signs of where I'm supposed to go. My mom observed me from when I was the age of about six, and I was always playing with kids younger than me. She first thought there was something mentally wrong with me, then she realized I'm not playing with the two-year-olds or the three-year-olds when I'm six. I'm actually teaching them and telling them stories and engaging them in play. Um, so my natural bend as a teacher was seen very early on. Yes, I've had, um, because I didn't have the capital to start my business, I had, I went the franchising way and I've had a lot of franchisees. It's not an overnight easy journey, but nothing I've ever done is. So when I started my first Kangaroo Kids preschool, all parents wanted their kids to get ready for entrance exams into junior KG or grade one of, you know, this prestigious school or that prestigious school. And parents would come to me and say, will you do that? And I'd say, definitely not. I'll do what's age appropriate for your child which is not to turn your child into a parrot, but to do what's developmentally appropriate for him at this age. I feel more successful if I actually make a difference. I, make, I feel more successful if I've had the opportunity to coach anyone, be it an adult or a child, and have set that child onto the next threshold of his journey, or that adult onto the next threshold of the journey, where they start realizing that they've got infinite potential, where they realize that if they have the correct mindset, the journey is going to be a wonderful one. I want to change the face of education in India. So I worked towards that. Then my next vision statement was, I want to be the Harley of schools. And now my vision statement is, can I reach every child, not just in India, but every child around the world that wants a personalized exciting system of learning, can I build it digitally and get it across to anyone who wants access? And the whole thing is that you cannot stop children questioning. The minute you stop children questioning anything, you fail them. Kids should be asking you why all the time. Is When I came to India and I saw how outdated the system was, I knew there was work to be done in Australia, but firstly, the impact I would have would be possibly on those 24 kids or 25 kids in my classroom. I knew that the impact opportunity here was much larger. Um, coming to India meant I could do something differently. There are a lot of teachers in Australia already doing things differently. But here I would be one who could actually lead the way and be a great leader unless I had empathy. To have empathy, I have to be able to put myself in your shoes. Um, and how do I get kids to do that? Do I teach them empathy as theory or do I put them in situations? In grade two, kids learn about the senses. We, we, we blindfold them and we ask them you know, to go for three hours feeling what it would be like not to have a sense of sight. And then they go and visit. The child has infinite potential. How can I make sure that that infinite potential gets realized? And you know, that's being my, my real mission and vision of what I want to do for a child, which is ignite the greatness he's got inside him. So we're in this whole, you know, push for grades and scores and, and you know, constantly sending our children on this high pressure journey. And one is that, can I inform the parent of what happens to the child when that happens? Everyone on this planet, be it man, woman, child, 
wakes up to some meaning and purpose. That meaning and purpose can be anything. So as long as you find meaning and purpose, uh, you could be an artist and create art all day and not earn money from it. You're still generating something through an energetic force. You know, um, there's an element in why I say tell parents that make sure your children are very inspired and very attached to what they want to do. Because to do anything needs a lot of persistence. And if you don't like doing something, you can't persist at it. It's just as natural as that. You then need external, extrinsic motivation. When your desire and purpose for what you want to do is really strong and it's internal, you don't need any ex external motivation or what we call extrinsic motivation. It becomes intrinsic. And that's the motivation we should be aiming for. So you watch kids very early on, you'll see signs of what kids are really good at um, and what they're interested in. And as long as they build a career, a life journey around that interest, um, they'll be intrinsically motivated, it won't be work, it'll only be play, and it leads to well-being. So um, the minute you see any challenge or any obstacle that comes your way, the minute you see it as a stepping stone to new learning, the cutthroatedness goes away. The anxiety around that goes away. And our education system is so set up for not embracing failure and for constantly looking down at it that kids will comply because what is it? I want to, I want to be accepted and I want to be loved. And if I want to be accepted and I want to be loved, which is the natural driver for everyone, every human being on this planet, if that's my driver, then for me to be accepted and be loved by mom, I have to get the grades. When I die, will the world be a little kinder, a little gentler, a little wiser? Um, if it is, with whatever role I could play in that, I would say, okay, I've, I've lived a meaningful, worthy life.